Hello, hello! I am back about a week later with my updated thoughts on the Sonia G Fundamental Eyeset Brushes. This is going to be a summary review. I'm going to split into four parts. The introduction of the set, each brush, and then differences from the original set, and then the meat of the video, which is thoughts on each of their brushes, their functions, and then recommendations. So I have three different recommendation breakdowns. Uh, one is my favorites from most to least, and then a personal set that I would throw together for traveling. And I'm going to be ranking them by uniqueness as well so that you can say shop your stash and see what you might be missing that one of these brushes could fill when they're released a la carte. So we have eight brushes in this set. If you want to know more detail about these brushes, Sonia herself wrote a great in-depth uh, deep dive into them and what her thoughts were in creating them. They have a nice walnut handle that's polished, feels great. Matte black ferrules, they're all goat hair, undyed and then dyed and a mix of dyed and undyed goat hair. So the whole set is 252 on Beautylish and as of filming this early Friday the 17th, they were still available. So I have a couple brushes here that are similar from her previous existing lines that I pulled, but let's talk about these first. There's four round brushes and four flat brushes. And of this uh, Fundamentals eye set, four brushes already exist in her brush line as evidenced by the ones I just pulled. So this is the Pencil S, this is brand new. This is Pencil L, previously known as Pencil 2. This is Builder S, this is Builder M, previously known as Builder 3. This is Worker S, previously known as Worker 3. This is Worker M, previously known as Worker 2. Oh, sorry. This is Worker S, previously known as Worker 3. This is Worker M, previously known as Worker 2. This is Crease M, and this is Crease L. So, of this set, these are existing brushes, and the ones that I don't have my fingers on are brand new. So, in her existing brushes, that I own. I have a worker from the Lotus, or I have a builder from the Lotus set in an undyed goat hair. And then I had a crease brush that I thought was identical, but I guess it's a little bit shorter. Might be different. This is crease two. And then I have a small worker, the crease, um, the formerly worker three. And then I have Worker M's, a couple of them, formerly Worker 2. And I also have a Kayaki Jumbo Blender, which sort of resembles it, but it's more compact, less fluffy, more resilient. And the wood is Kayaki instead of Walnut, and it does feel a bit different. So as far as all of these brushes go, theoretically, they can all be used with cream and powder eyeshadows. Starting with this one, this is pretty much like a finger, like a really soft finger. If you were going to just do uh, eye painting with or hand painting with your makeup, which I sometimes do. So this one, because of that broad surface, you can lay down a base really quickly. And then once you turn it on its side, you have a more controlled surface. So then you have more precision. So then you can get it, say, closer to the lash line get it right in the crease, and then that tip, because it tapers, again, you have even more precision to be more precise in the placement of your color. And because it's so nicely fluffy, you can use it to blend. My favorite use of it is probably a one and done eyeshadow, so you take a color as you lay it down, you're kind of doing little wiping motions to blend, so this will lay down and blend at the same time. This is also good for doing concealer, just dabbing concealer in tight spots, such as the corner of the nose, mouth, and also in this little hollow underneath the eye and between the eye and the nose. So really like a finger. This is like an even smaller finger. So if this was your index finger, this would be your pinky finger. So this Worker S is just a smaller version of this. 
but despite the shorter length, it doesn't feel firmer. The hair density was adjusted. And then again, anything that I said could that could be used for worker M can be done by worker S just with more precision. And then we have crease L. Crease L is your tapered, fluffy, round blending brush. A staple, maybe a little bit larger of a staple than most people have, but because of that taper to the top, you can really either just blend a small area or you can press a little bit harder and blend more. So you don't accidentally kind of end up over blending your eyeshadow. This one, the crease L, uh, sorry, crease M, is more like a shader. So if I wanted to intensify color in a certain area, I would kind of use this going sideways and then sort of lay it down first and then also use the tip and kind of dab the product on and kind of gently blend it out as I go along. On the converse of that, if this was a featherweight application touch, the Builder M is like the one that lays it down really opaquely. You have this wonderful big surface to really cover area quickly. And you also have this surface here on along the profile, which allows you to have more precision. Say if you're trying to get just underneath the crease area or above the crease area, if you were doing say a cut crease and then you have this tip where if you use just the finest pressure, you could smudge. A better one for that though, I think would be the Builder S. The Builder S is also flat, like the Builder M, except for you have even more refined of a tip. So then you can apply eyeshadow to really compact areas where you want to do just like a fine detail application of either dark color or light color. And then that tip here, can just like really get in there and just place it and you kind of use low motions to blend it out or you can take it to pat eyeshadow on top of pencil or gel liner to set it or you, if your gel and pencil liner has a bit of working time you can take this and start blending smudging it out and making it more hazy looking and then this one is like a firm finger pad pencil l I really liked taking it, so let's say I laid down a, a wash of color with this. I would take this one with, say, a pop of color or a darker color and start and use it almost like a crayon. So after I load it up, I would start close to the lash line and just pat, 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 pat to apply the color and then just kind of as I scribble upward, it would blend and grade the color in an ombre from darker to lighter as you go along. And because the surface is round all around, you pretty much cannot end up with a harsh edge. Like you'd have to be really trying to end up with a harsh edge. And similarly, because this is kind of firm, it's great for wiping edges away. So say I ended up with a really harsh edge. This one would be almost like taking a really soft Q-tip and kind of just erasing it. This one, Pencil S, is a detail brush. So to place color very close to the lash line in here and just like messing with gel liner to get it in between the lashes. This is actually a good one for tight lining as well I discovered which is something I normally do with flat brushes but there was one day when I started playing with this with a gel liner to tight line and it's great because it is so soft you can just kind of jam it up there into your eyelashes as long as you have a workable gel product that's not going to run into your eye and make your eyes sting this brush is <laughs> surprisingly great for it so even though these are dyed I definitely did use them with cream products and they handle them fine these I did not use with cream products because they're a little fluffier and they probably wouldn't have handled it very well, so I just didn't try. But the rest of these guys all handle cream products fine. This one was more for like spreading primer around or if it was a tinted primer. Uh, this one did handle a cream to powder, sort of like glitter, duochrome eyeshadow, and that was a one and done eyeshadow that I applied just with that. And yeah, those are my thoughts on the individual brushes.
So moving on to recommendations, my most favorite to least favorite. It probably will not come as a surprise to you all that my most to least are ranked by most functions to least functions. So Builder M would be my favorite of the set, followed by Builder S, followed by Crease L because this is a brush you just need. And then it's followed by Worker S, then Worker M, then Crease M, then Pencil L, and then Pencil S. So these two are kind of the color putter downers. So that's why these guys are ranked so highly. And Crease L you just need a, I, I prefer round crease brushes and this is just such a nice one. And then Worker S just because there's a little bit more precision to it. Again, it's like a small fingertip versus a large fingertip. This one is probably more versatile. If you're asking me, I actually do prefer this one more because I do use this for concealer around the eye. But I think most people would prefer a more controlled brush and that's why I rank this as higher than this one. And then we get down to Crease Sam. This one's a more specialized brush. Most of the time when I'm doing makeup in the morning, I'm not really worried about like feathering, shading on. I just usually do two contrasty shades or two, yeah, two high contrast shades in the same family and then blend it together. I'm usually not worrying about like the nuanced shading. So this is a less useful brush for me on a day-to-day -day basis. And then same thing for this one. This is more of an artistry brush for me for when I have more time to play with um, getting a very controlled look. And then this one, again, is more of an artistry brush. So that's why these three are on the lowest ranking in terms of favorite recommendations, but they are all soft, no irritation whatsoever. If, if I, was I was to build, build a travel, travel set, set, oh yes, yes that's one thing, thing I need to mention. mention. These it brushes fit nicely into say like her brush envelope into these loops because the ends are tapered, they slide right in versus say the fat handles from the originals. It's a little harder to get in there. And also because this is a glossy lacquer, it kind of catches on the vinyl versus the satin wood finish here slides in really nicely. So if I was to build a travel set, I would take Builder M, Worker M, Pencil L, and Worker S. And I think between those four brushes, I could cover all the eye looks that I would possibly want to do. And again, Builder M is really the um, color laid down brush. If I want to put the color on there and have it true to pan, this is the brush for it. And then I can turn it on the side or wipe it off first, turn it on its side, get another color on. Excellent for that. Worker M, because I might be using it for other things, like I said, using it for concealer and also because I would want a large brush paired with a medium brush. This would say lay down my eyeshadow base quickly. This one wouldn't do that quite in the, with the efficiency that I would want it to. And I would bring along Pencil L because what if I do feel like being artistic and I need like a more art, um, artistic brush? And then this one would probably act more as my eraser and I would use this for shading as well. So if I want to build it from dark to light or dark to light, I would be using this brush to do it. And then finally Worker S because that way I have a medium brush, a large brush and a small brush for detail to get outer corner, inner corner, or close to the lash line. And finally, in terms of most to least unique, Worker S is probably the most unique, followed by Worker M. The Worker brushes in general are just really unique to the brush world, and I think Sonia did that intentionally after looking at her whole collection. They're just these really thick, yet flat brushes, flat being that they're squeezed flat, and they just cover so many functions. It's like the worker brushes are truly unique. So that's why Worker S and then Worker M are the most unique. Followed by Crease M. It's pretty hard to find these little skinny tapered crease brushes. 
sure, I can think of a half dozen off the top of my head, but in general, if you don't have one of these in your collection yet, this one is a good one to add because all the other ones I can think of, they start tapering. So this one starts tapering at around between a halfway and two thirds point. The other ones start taping, tapering more around a two thirds to three quarters point. So they tend to be more rounded and less pointed at the tip. And then let's see, that was number three. Number four would be Builder S. So most flat paddle brushes like this tend to be truncated at about this point. This one, the extra length to it with that flex gives you some nice movement, but because of the hair and how it's like kind of all packed in together, it gives you nice resiliency. I think this is a pretty unique brush as well. And then fifth most unique would be the Pencil L. This is a brush that doesn't really exist in normal brush lines. And the ones I can think of are actually made of squirrel. Very few of them, or maybe it's just in my collection, very few of them are made of goat. So that's five brushes. The last three are ones that you can find more commonly. So that would be, say, the Crease L, the Pencil S, and the Builder M. So these three brushes, you probably already have something like this. However, if you want another one, because you find that your current brush of them are always dirty, these are really good options to have as a backup. And as for miscellaneous thoughts, um, this is really the only thing I can think of. I had this really nice walnut holder. This is by Shakuda, and these brushes just look really good in this holder. I've been trying to find it to be able to give a link to you guys to purchase it, but it's just not readily available on the internet anymore. So if you guys can find one, share it with me so then I can share it with everybody else, that would be awesome. So I hope you enjoyed this video covering the brushes. I hope you found this review helpful and it'll help you make informed choices when it comes to purchasing Fude. And of course, if I enabled you to just buy the whole set, um, let's pretend you got the information from somebody else. I'll see you next time. Bye.